With all the inflation metrics coming in hotter than expected and a stronger labor market than is anticipated, can we really believe the Federal Reserve Bank when they tell us that inflation is under control? Is the Fed lying to us? Maybe, but maybe not. In this episode, I'm going to tell you why I'm okay with it either way, how to invest in stocks in the current environment, and what's happened in the last week. Imagine you're Jerome Powell, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank, and you're looking at the inflation data, you're seeing that it's not coming down, and you're worried. What if there's going to be a hard landing? What if we're going to have an epic recession? The problem is the market and the economy moves on whatever you say. So if you come out and tell the American people, hey, I'm concerned we're headed into a recession, that's what's going to happen. Companies are going to fire people. People are going to sell their stocks, which will cause the stock market to crash. And the very thing you're trying to avoid, you will create by telling people you're worried about it coming. So even if the Fed isn't telling the truth right now, it's not like they have a choice. They can't tell us that we're headed for a hard landing. They have to say it looks like we're going to have a soft landing or no landing at all. Otherwise, they will create the very thing they're trying to avoid. Taking all that into account, I still have the same outlook I've had for the majority of the year. I am bearish. I'm not entirely sure if we'll test the lows of 2022, break through the lows. We have people who are predicting an S&P 500 down at 2700. So there could be a big sell off or we might just pull back a bit from where we are right now. Over in the speculation and play portfolio, this week's winner was Danimer Scientific with a 15.38% gain on no news. I did a lot of research, tried to figure out what makes the stock move, and I think it just gets so oversold and so shorted that the short squeeze results it to pop from time to time. This week's loser was Virgin Galactic, which dropped 13.97%. And just like I've said in past weeks, I think this is just speculation coming out of the market. Virgin Galactic also doesn't report until next week, so there's really no news moving this stock. And even after that pretty substantial pullback, it's still up more than 50% on the year. So it's not like it's getting hit hard at all in this sell-off. When we look at the performance of the investments in play portfolio, this week's winner was NVIDIA with an 8.87% gain. Even though NVIDIA reported relatively mediocre earnings, CEO Jensen Wong came out and said the magic words, artificial intelligence, and talked about how we're at an inflection point and people are going to be adopting AI in a very big way, which caused the stock to pop significantly afterwards and even hold up during Friday's sell-off. This week's loser was Rivian, which dropped 14.34%. Now, even though Rivian doesn't report earnings until next week, it was Lucid's earning report that sold off all of the smaller EV makers. Lucid makes luxury EVs that cost more than $100,000, and they've seen a serious decrease in demand, which caused a fear in the entire EV sector. And that's why Rivian sold off this week. As I say every week, I look at the positions in my investments in play portfolio to try and figure out market sentiment. As you can see, NVIDIA is still the biggest position in the portfolio, even though I took profit in it this week with a 6.78% makeup of the entire portfolio. Speculative money might be coming back out of the markets as the new spec basket, which includes Coinbase, Dutch Bros, Rivian, and more, has once again moved into the sixth spot in the entire portfolio. And that's a good sign to me as we'd rather speculative money not be in the markets because it causes a lot more volatility. The only move I did in the speculation and play portfolio this week was to buy my ultra speculative, super volatile, unbelievably lottery ticket Junior Gold Miner, Golden Minerals, with the ticker symbol AUMN. I have to emphasize exactly how speculative this position is. It's not only a penny stock, it's a penny Junior Gold Miner and could go out of business at any moment. So I'm fully prepared to lose every single dollar I put into this position. Accordingly, it's a very small position. It's in the speculation and play portfolio. Therefore, it is only going to have a very small impact if it goes to zero. I added to this position at 22.32 cents, and this buy lowered my per share cost 27.59% from 42.77 cents down to 30.97 cents. And the reason I bought this way is you can see that there's a lot of resistance up there and I wanted to be able to get the price down enough where I could actually pull some off the table if it goes back up to that point. 
That means my next sell target is 30.99 cents. And my next buy target is slightly above Gold Minerals all time low at 13.59 cents. I took profits in Nvidia this week after it reported its earnings with a sale that went through on the 23rd at $234.47. It might seem odd that I would take profits in Nvidia when I have faith in AI and I think Nvidia is going to be the leader in the space, but this is where discipline trumps conviction. Not only was Nvidia the biggest position in my portfolio, it exceeded the allocation target that I had have for this portfolio. And that's where I have to take profits to reduce it so that it's at least the size of the target allocation. Given how volatile the markets are and how bearish I am, instead of letting it run hot, which is what I normally do, I actually took profits once it had exceeded that allocation target. The sale locked in 19.96% in gains on shares that I bought for $195.45 back on April 22nd of last year. And it lowered my per share cost $11.72 from negative $13.45 to negative $25.17. For my portfolio, a negative per share cost means I've taken all of the money out of that position in addition to $25.17 per share that I still hold in the portfolio. From here, my next buy target is down here at $141.36. And you can see there was a lot of support there in the past, and that's why I picked it as my next buy target. I will also buy more if Nvidia pulls back to its low from 2022 down here at $108.13. I am going to let Nvidia run hot from here as my next sell target is at $282.74. And if we pull back, you can see that's just below its high from 2022, which is how I picked that sell target. Longtime viewers of my channel may remember that I shorted the S&P 500 back at the end of January. And that was actually originally not a good move because you can see I bought put spreads here on the 30th and the S&P 500 rallied even further. This week, the S&P 500 sold off beneath the strike prices of my put spreads, which meant that they became profitable. So I decided to close them on Friday. Now, what happens with a put spread is it means that I own one and I'm short the other. So in order to close the position, you have to buy the one that you're short and sell the one that you're owning. The profit you make on the trade is the difference between what you got for selling one put and what you paid to buy the other one back. In this case, I bought the put spreads for 74.42 cents each, and I sold them for $1.31.69. As a result, I captured a profit of 76.96%. And even though I did leave quite a bit of money on the table because that was only 66% of the overall amount that I could have gotten for those put spreads, they expire next Friday. With the market having sold off pretty strongly this week, it is possible that we could see a bounce. Additionally, Warren Buffett, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, has its quarterly earnings report this Saturday, where he sends out a letter and talks about how strong the American economy is. It might sound strange, but his single letter has the capacity to move move the markets so they could actually rally next week. And this is my problem with using options. You have to be right about three variables, direction, distance, and time. And if you're wrong about any of those three, your puts or your calls will expire worthless. In other words, if SPY closes above $400 next Friday, my put spreads will go from being a profit of 76.96% to a complete loss of all of the profit and the original money that I put in. My brother came up with one of my favorite mottos when it comes to trading and investing. You will always leave money on the table. If you're good, you won't leave all of it. If you want to learn more about my investments in play, speculation in play, and pandemic portfolios, it's all available free of charge from my website, geturk.com. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.